Okay, today I'm going to show you how to wire a Square D control relay. Hi, my name is Craig Michaud and I am the electrical instructor. Today we're going to talk about a control relay and we're going to use the Square D type. The nice thing about this type of control relay is the contacts are interchangeable, meaning I can have, I can set as many normally open or normally closed contacts as I like. Now, one of the disadvantages is if you loosen the screws, the contacts won't make very good contacts. So you have to make sure that everything is, is tight. The most important thing is to understand how they work and what we're looking at. So what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna show you how to take apart a control, uh, control relay to replace the contacts or you know, reverse the contacts. You know, the difference between a control relay that's a solid state compared to a control relay like this square D type that I'm showing you is means it's interchangeable meaning I can set up whatever I want. If I want all normally open contacts, I can have all normally open contacts. If I want to have all normally closed contacts, I can have all normally closed contacts. The biggest thing that we have to remember is, is it a 24 volt control voltage or is it a 120 volt control voltage? The one we're going to use today is 120 volt control voltage. What we're going to do is we're going to use our start stop station that we wired in a previous video, uh, which I believe is up here somewhere we're gonna go through and we're just gonna drop this control relay in, basically taking the eight pin relay out and I'm gonna wire up the control relay so that you can see how they work. It pretty much works the same way. I'm just gonna show you in a demonstration. This is our square D control relay. And basically what it means is I can control four individual circuits off of this. It's basically a contactor if you think about it, okay? What we're gonna do today is we're gonna, we're gonna go over and we're gonna say, okay, well, what is this? Well you got to remember that the, each screw that's in a line, those screws are basically nothing more than a single pole switch. So if you understand the concept of wiring a single pole switch in a light, this is very sim similar. So what do we got to do? Well, let's say I want to change the contacts. I want to make sure that I have a normally open and a normally closed contact. I'm going to wire it up so that I can make my lights work in my, from my previous video. Let me show you how to do that. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to start with the two outside screws. Okay, you're going to want to loosen those screws up. You don't want to take the screws out. Now, once you get that done, you're gonna take the little screw here with the red part, which is our coil, and you're gonna loosen that up. Okay. So in order to remove this, all you have to do is take it off. Now, once you look at them, you can see that we have a white and we have a black. So because I've used these before, I know that when I see these whites, that means I, they are normally open contacts. This here is my normally closed contact. Now, all I have to do is take the contact and pick it up straight up, and I can take the contact out. Now, when you look at the contact, it's... That's what we just had. You can see on the top where it has a green, okay? That green is designating normally open. If I flip it around, you'll see the yellow, and that means normally closed. So what I'm gonna do is because I want the normally closed, I'm gonna keep the normally closed in here, and I'm just gonna set it back into place. Now, if I wanted to take this and make this a normally closed, all I have to do is pull it out, flip it around, pop it in place, okay? Your coil is inside the unit here, so we don't really have to worry too much about that, okay? Once we're set and we have our contacts set the way we want them, now all we have to do is put the cover plate back on, okay? It goes on one direction, okay? So we basically take, and you can see when you look at the 
when you look at this, you can see that there is a large slot and a smaller slot. And when you look at the inside of the control relay, you can see that there is a larger slot and a smaller slot. So you want to make sure that you get them lined up and then you just let it fall back down. Now, my personal preference is to make sure that I screw the coil part in first because that's going to be the most difficult one because it's going to move. I'm going to get it snug and then I'm just going to press down and give it one quarter twist and then I'm set. Now all I have to do is tighten down my screws. And that's it. Now I have now I have two normally open and two normally closed set up. Okay. So remember your control relay is all wired. Once we understand what contacts we're going to use, the next thing we got to talk about is our coil. Now, our coil is built in. All right? So all we have to do is hook up our neutral and our hot or our hot and our neutral, whatever is going to be controlling our device. Just like when we talked about our 8 pin and our 11 pin, we talked about 2 and 7 and 2 and 10. This is basically your 2 and 7 or your 2 and 10. Doesn't matter, polarity is not an issue. We have nothing to worry about. If it was 24 volts, it would be marked on the coil that it's 24 volts. Do not put 120 volts to a 24 volt coil, you will blow it up. Okay, so now that you understand that, let's wire it up.
Okay, so you can see back here, we've got our coil and we've got our wire coming off of our green button, okay? Our contacts here are set up. On this side here, what I did is I did my lights and over here I did my hold, okay? Um, this terminal I did not use, so I used this switch, this switch, and this switch on the end, okay? What you have to remember is unlike an eight pin or an 11 pin relay, the power doesn't get transferred unless you put power on them. So this is one single pole switch, this is another single pole switch. So you can see down here where I had to put the power coming up from my terminal strip to my jumper and then from the jumper I went over to my hold, okay? Now, now that's the, probably one of the most important things you have to remember is you have to just get power to everything. So again, just like a single pole switch, make sure you jump every contact out. If you're using two different power sources, make sure you have the right switches with the right power source. At the same time, always make sure that that power you're bringing comes off of the stop control button at some point because you want to be able to take power away from it, especially for the hold, okay? So now that I installed the control relay, and we really didn't talk too much about the holding. This is, you know, something that we can talk about in another video. But I want to just show you that we basically did the same exact thing as we did when we were holding an ice cube relay. The control relay works the same way. It just gives us a few different features, okay? And let me show you. Okay, you see the red button's on. I press the start button. My green button comes on. Hit the stop button. My red light comes on. Now, I'm sure you can hear the difference in the control relay compared to the ice cube relay. I hope this video gave you an, a good understanding on a control relay. Where would you use a control relay? Well, a control relay would be used in any circuit that requires it. So if there's a control cabinet and they require this type, then you're gonna go with it. Here's the thing, this is more of an industrial type rather than an ice cube relay. There, I can run more amps through this device than I can an ice cube relay. So, you know, the coil's gonna last longer, it's gonna hold longer. You know, it's almost like a contactor type. We'll talk about contactors when we get into motor starters and stuff like that. I hope this video helped. If this video helped, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Also, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. And always, have a great day and be safe.